it's the pinnacle of the cycling season for those of you who love mud. The 2018 Cyclocross World Championships take place in Limburg in the Netherlands, with a course similar to the Valkenburg rounds of previous World Cups, with a few tweaks thrown in in preparation for the Worlds. Here we have eight riders who could be in with a shout at the rainbow bands in the elite races, four men and four women. It's been an absolute standout year for the Dutchman, and as the season wears on, you can argue that he's developed into a class of his own, into a situation where only mechanical misfortune or downright bad luck could stop him winning a second world title on home soil this Sunday. Of course, it's never as straightforward as that, but it's hard to argue with the stats. 25 race wins out of 30 starts, and he's not been beaten since Boxing Day. He'll almost certainly be expected to deliver in Limburg, but with that brings its own pressures. Let's not forget, for all his talent, he lost the rainbow bands to Wout van Aert over the last two years, so it's certainly not a foregone conclusion. Speaking of Wout, it's been a case of close but no cigar for the reigning world champion. 24 podiums this season is impressive, but he'll surely be frustrated that just five of those were converted into wins. It's safe to say Van der Poel had the edge in most races this year, but it's usually not been by much. Van Aert's wins in rounds 5 and 6 of the World Cup came in fairly heavy conditions, and perhaps a muddier course at Valkenburg will swing the advantage back towards the Belgian. And for all of Van der Poel's brimming talent, it's Van Aert who holds the rainbow bands, and we're sure he'll give it everything in defence of his title on Sunday. It's hard to look past the big two in the men's race, but let's throw in a couple of dark horses who could cause an upset. First up, we've got Lars van der Haar, who is the only man to have gotten the better of Van Aert and Van der Poel this year, back in October in the first round of the DVV Trophy. Van der Haar's strength will lie in his familiarity with this particular course. Although there will be a few modifications for the World Championships, the Valkenburg course will retain many of the characteristics of the World Cup rounds here held in previous years. Van der Haar won those particular rounds in 2013, 2014 and 2015, and he loves to make a fire start. Time will tell if Dutch team tactics will give him the license to do the same on Sunday, but either way, he's a strong podium contender. Belgium's plan B could well be Tone Arts. One of the most memorable moments from this season came at the Koppenberg Cross, where Arts was locked in a two-up battle with Mathieu van der Poel for the majority of the race. Van der Poel only managed to break free with half a lap to go, and it's clear to see exactly how hard he was pushed when he collapsed after crossing the finish line. Arts seems to favour races with a lot of climbing, and Limburg has that in abundance. He's been there or thereabouts all season, and another good performance could earn him a World Championship medal. That's the men, now let's check out the main contenders for the women's race. Coming off the back of a maiden world championship title 12 months ago, Sonne Kant seems to have returned this season even stronger than before. She's racked up 30 races so far in this campaign, winning 14, including 5 World Cup rounds and the European title. She did finish 12th, however, in the final round of the World Cup. Is she tapering or is a full season of cross finally starting to take its toll? Needless to say, she'll be hoping to save her best race for Saturday. She's won an astonishing 14 consecutive National Cyclocross Championships, but the one glaring omission from Katie Compton's Palmares is a world title. She's come close over the years, second place in 2007, 2011 and 2013. Perhaps she could be deemed unlucky to be racing in the same era as the peerless Mariana Voss, who beat the American to the title on all three of those occasions. Compton turns 40 this year, but she's still winning the biggest races in the world and encouragingly has found her best form in January with wins at the GP Sven Nace on New Year's Day and the World Cup round in Nome. A rainbow jersey would be the crowning achievement in a long and glittering career. When Compton does hang up her wheels, she'll leave the future of US women's cyclocross in capable hands, with a number of young riders making an impression at elite level, including Ellen Noble and the next rider on our list, Caitlin Keogh. She's enjoyed the majority of her success this season across the pond, with second place finishes in both the US-based rounds of the World Cup and wins at the KMC Cross and Charm City. Her form translated over to the European calendar with World Cup podium finishes in Boinsa and more recently in Nome. Is now the time to rise to the occasion at the World Championships? 
Question marks surrounding Pauline Ferron Provost's involvement in the 2018 Worlds were lifted after she came away relatively unscathed from a nasty crash at Hogeheide. It's been a short but successful cross season for the 2015 world champion. In just her second international race of the season, she started from the back of the grid to win in Overreiser, and more recently she's claimed her third national title and made the podium at the World Cup in Nome. The lack of racing will place her a little further back on the grid on Saturday, but she's a naturally aggressive rider and the technical, hilly nature of Valkenberg could suit a skillful rider like Ferron Provo. There's your eight, but have we missed anyone? Let us know in the comments down below. If you're interested in riding cyclocross yourself, we've got four training drills to get you started here. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And while you're here, why not check out the GCN shop? There's a link on screen right now.